everybody! Welcome back to Recordology! I'm here in the studio because I can't wait a second longer to get into this and share with you two very different but very cool radios. You're not going to want to miss this. Packaging here is really slick. The boxes and packaging overall lately have just been fantastic. You know, mid 2000s, you bought some electronics. It was gonna be in a blister pack and you would be cutting yourself probably if you opened it wrong and it was difficult to get into. Now you've got these fancy things like this with magnetic closures and stuff. It's just next level, next level. So here we go. This is the eight or the A8W from Cho Young portable internet radio. As you guys know, I love internet radios. And as I always say, people will say, well, you can just do all that with your phone. Well, yes and no. If you've gone on TuneIn lately, you will sit through about five minutes of ads before you get to the station. And it's it's just not an, an entirely great experience. Now, there are multiple ways to listen to internet radio. I'm not saying this is the only way, but if you like physical media, if you like radios, if you like devices, if you like taking a break from your phone, and that's a goal of mine, the more I can do away from my phone, the better, then this might be right up your alley because it gives you the convenience, the benefit, as it were, of internet radio without being tied to your phone. And I think that that is a good thing. This looks cool. I love the color on this. It comes in a couple different colors, and I'm glad this is the one we got. I wonder if the other unit, the giveaway unit, is the same color. Let's find out. Yeah, it looks like that is the same color. So if you like this color, then, uh, again, stay tuned to the end of today's show, and I'll tell you how you might be able to win one of your own, assuming it's a good unit and we would want to recommend it. That remains to be seen. Man, this thing is just a handheld thing. It's fairly lightweight, not disturbingly lightweight, but it's it's not super heavy. The design is just cool. It's like minimalistic. I love it. So there's the speaker grill. It's plastic construction, sort of a metallic finish. I love this color. Man, that looks good. <laughs> it's a good looking little thing. All right, let's start on top here. We've got uh, TF, that'll be the SD card. FM and power. So maybe we have FM radio and internet radio in one device, which is good. Front panel here, if we look at the controls, we got OK, forward and back, uh, forward and back, a clear perhaps button, a menu, a news, music, favorites. This button looks like an edit button, perhaps settings and a microphone slash play pause. Interesting. Looking on the side here, we've got a couple of knobs. They are plastic. This one has good drag to it. This one is stepped. And we've got a Type-C, labeled Type-C there, USB charging port. So there's that. Now, this one has a button on it as well. This one does not. On the bottom, we've got our SD card slot and our SIM card slot. Now, on, the, uh, on this radio here, I was like baffled by why we would need a SIM. And you guys, you know, stated the obvious, which is, well, if you, you know, are on the go and you have a SIM card, you could conceivably, you know, access internet radio away from your home. And that's so obvious, but probably so true. Looks like there may also be a microphone built into it as well. Obviously the display here, all of the weight to this unit is on this half. This half over here feels fairly lightweight. But that is the device itself. So let's uh, go ahead and see what it can do. Okay, so I sat down, I read the manual, <laughs> and I thought that that would probably be a good idea. One thing I'm super excited about after reading the manual is this button right here. This has a voice search, so I can press this button and tell it to go to BBC World Service instead of having to futz around with a menu. So that is a very, very cool thing. All right. Enough of that, let's power it on. Two second press on the power switch to boot it up. And there we have the menu, or I should say the logo. Let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see that. Nice bright display. As always, these displays look a lot better to the naked eye than they do um, 
you know, on camera. They just have a tendency to not look quite as good. All right, so we're going to start by going to here and Wi-Fi on. And I'm going to add my Wi-Fi network, and I'll be right back. All right, that was actually surprisingly easy. This knob right here is the navigation. So you just, you know, rotate through this, and then when you want to click on something, you tap on it. Um, I connected it to my uh, 2.4 network, and that did the trick. It was fairly painless, definitely not as annoying as some of these can be. And then it asks you to reboot uh, to save the password, which I did. So now the unit's back on, and um, there we go. So let's see what our options are here on screen. And um, I really want this... Uh, camera to adjust to the lighting level. So again, that, the noise that you see on the screen there is, is not visible to the naked eye. So it looks like we're greeted with regions So and a search. Okay, so we go North America, network error. That's awesome. It's working great. <laughs> I don't know why there's a network error. We just connected it and it said it was fine. Okay, I'm not sure why, but I had to reboot it again and now we've got the... Uh, the indicator up there so we are connected by the way before I forget it this knob right here on the bottom right is a volume and if you rotate it all the way down it puts it into a sleep mode so that's not a power off mode that's a sleep mode it comes right back up without having to boot up so it's faster to start it and it'll help save the battery in order to power it off you press and hold this for like five seconds so okay now back to what we were trying to do a minute ago let's jump into a region and see what we got. So America, Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador. This is fun. I love just browsing and seeing what you can get right out of the air. Although we're not really out of the air. Right off the internet. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pick one here. Loading. Always takes a second to load. Curious what it's going to show here. If it shows us the resolution of the channel, etc., etc. Come on now. Taking a minute, taking a little longer than expected. Although this depends on the station. Some stations may load sooner. And it went to sleep before it could even load. So I woke it up by just jostling this and reset the loading. Weird, it went to zero and then it bounced back to where it was. Okay, so we gotta be a little patient. We'll try another station and see if that's just specific to this one or if that's, you know, an issue, something to expect. All right, the sound quality is adequate. It, it sounds like a small speaker. It doesn't sound big, but uh, here, let me hold it up to the mic. That's okay. Um, so yeah, you, if you want, you could heart the station. And I wonder what happens if you click forward, if it goes on to the next station in the list. But this gives us another chance to see one loading. So let's go ahead and see how long that takes. All right, this is taking pretty much just as long as the last one took. So the loading definitely takes a minute there. Okay, so what I really am curious about is this voice function, so I have to I have to try this. <laughs> By the way, something while I was sitting there waiting for the channel to load, I was looking around this device. This has no headphone jack. There is no way to hook up your headphones to this, which is a major bummer. I don't think there's any Bluetooth connectivity in or out. And um, yeah, like it's you're bound to this speaker. So just keep that in mind. That may be perfectly fine. Maybe you just want something to listen to talk radio from all over the world, or you just don't mind if it has a smaller sound. Sort of a trade off for the portability. This will slip right into your pocket. But if this, if you want like a system to hook up to your, you know, your hi fi or, or some kind of big sound system, this wouldn't be the one for you. There are plenty out there that do it. This is not that one. But if you just want a little portable thing, you know what I mean? This could be, this could really do the trick. Okay, I'm super excited, but I'm gonna hit the, well, first let's go to the news button. Let's try a couple of these built-in presets. Yeah, so it brings up various stations. Now, there are so many thousands and tens of thousands of stations out there all over the world that, you know, the browser functionality is not enough. You need to be able to search. So the fact that we are probably gonna be able to do that with this voice search, is a very, very good thing. In fact, that's a lot better than trying to fiddle with a menu to search. I think that that's a better way to do it. So let's go ahead and listen to this little, man, the screen timeout on that is a little annoying. Okay, network error, so that one didn't work. 
Let's go ahead and jump into the menu. Let me show you what the menu options are. So your internet connectivity. Okay, so the backlight does have a timer. That seems a little too short to me. So I'm gonna set that to 40 seconds. Play time limit. So you can say, eh, no more than uh, 30 minutes. I wonder if that's like a sleep timer. Auto play, on and off, scheduled power. Alarm clock functionality, version info, reset factory. So it's a pretty simple device. Now, if I click on this, add streaming station. So can I like type in? Oh, okay. So I have to go to their website, put in this code. So let's search by voice. BBC World Service. Oh, I have to press and hold. BBC World Service. Sweet, it brought it right up. That is sick. Okay, that is really, really cool. And now we're waiting for it to load. No aerial on this for FM either. And that's what led me to look for the headphone jack. I'm like, well, maybe it uses the headphone jack as many little portables do, but this has neither. So I'm not sure how that FM sensitivity will be. We'll test it here in a second. But that voice search, that is cool. That is a, that's something exciting, I think. Okay, for some reason... It's, it's, I got a message saying network error and then it connected to J Japan NHK World Radio, which is interesting, but not what I was looking for. The ballpark and see the Chicago White Sox on Friday. I will not be there. I will not be there. <laughs> no, you're not missing much. No, I. So. Something I got to thinking about is perhaps the voice recognition or even the menu, the whole experience could be improved perhaps through a firmware update down the road. Also, maybe it would help if I was closer to the mic. I'm a few feet away because of where the camera's at right now. So um, that's something else to consider. And this is a, this isn't gonna be as good of a voice recognition as say your iPhone that actually maps your vocal parameters. This is just a very generic thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not distinguishing accents but it's still a cool, a potentially cool thing. All right, let's go over to FM here. The first time you switch to FM, it does an FM scan. So it's a scan radio. It's gonna scan all available stations and then you'll be able to skip between them with these buttons right here. And then if you ever like move or go to a different location and you want to rescan, you can press and hold the FM button and it'll allow you to do that. Just like the child. Bachelor's degree in aviation safety. I turn the page on hold me. Now I ain't Some stations are coming in pretty clear, pretty clear. I don't have the best reception where I am, but at the same time it seems to get the job done. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about, you can play SD cards, uh, MP3 files, I think it supports up to 32 gigs. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that in today's video. It would, it would play an MP3. So I, I think that's fair to say, we know what that would be like. We know what this sounds like with this speaker. And this is a cool little device, a little pocket, uh, radio. Definitely. If you're into internet radio, I would suggest this as a secondary radio, your portable perhaps. I wouldn't say this would be the best primary radio, unless you don't mind the small speaker. All right, so that is the A8W. And again, we will be giving one away. Stay tuned to the end to find out how. Okay, now we're gonna take a look and a listen at the Chow Young R1. First thing I thought was Chow Yan. Is that the same thing as Chow Young? <laughs> Chow Young? but I, I had opened it up just to make sure, yes, uh, maybe an alternate way um, to either pronounce, say, or display that brand name. So let's go ahead and get into it. This one has a more traditional box, but I'm glad that products are coming in boxes again and, and not blister packs. I can't say that enough. So this is the R1. I believe this is a more traditional radio. I don't think this is an internet radio. So we've got the device on uh, these uh, foam blocks here, a little accessory pouch. Let's see what's inside here. I'm guessing a charge cable and maybe headphones? Okay. Is that, is that an antenna? It's gotta be an antenna. Interesting way to do it, okay. And then we've got, so I'm guessing that's an FM antenna. And then we've got USB-C. So it'll be a battery operated, rechargeable radio. Go ahead and take 
the protective pieces off. It's got the same plastic wrap that we've seen on the other units. Here's a big reveal, guys. Oh, that looks cool. I like that. Slick. So we've got a wood look to it, kind of a mid-century retro look. This looks like a sort of a brass coloring here and the knobs, which will probably be plastic. Eh, eh, yeah, those are plastic, but this trim piece here is metal. This is a wood veneer, like the kind of vintage retro cloth grill there. There's a close look at the dial. It's got good drag on it. It feels really good. This is cool. Sometimes the basics are the way to go. This is a function switch. It looks like we've got shortwave, FM, AM, and Bluetooth. This is a tone knob, and this would be volume. Chow Young R1. On the bottom, we've got sort of a rubberized plastic feet. Nothing on the sides or top. On the bottom here, we've got a base port, a QR code, I guess, for support. And interesting how they're just printing stuff like this on the device. Uh, there's the uh, Type-C USB charging. Internal or external? I'm guessing that's the antenna. So it'll be either be an aux jack or an antenna jack. Okay, no screens, no displays, and that's totally fine by me. So let's go ahead and set this thing to FM. And I don't, do I just turn this on? And it comes to life? Yes, it does. Okay, I'm going to switch the mic to dual mode so you'll be able to hear. Uh, it'll front fire and rear fire at the same time. I'm gonna turn this on. Wow. Like I said, the reception isn't great here. Advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skill. Definitely a digital tuner, as expected. Reception without the external antenna hooked up yet is average. So uh, tone is set to, to fairly high. It's like in treble mode. So let's see how that tonality changes. I'm surprised to see a little LED popping up there behind that grill. Let me find something different here. And we'll change the tone. Up. Oh, and there is a light back there. Hard to see right now. I'll change the studio lights in a minute so you can hear that. But let me, or see that. Let me find something to listen to. That's in full base mode. Very cool. Yeah, definitely is nice when you can warm it up with that bass on. A lot of punch, a lot of volume. It's a loud little thing. And uh, this is backlit. So let me turn off these studio lights so you can see it a little clearer. A little easier to see there. Yeah, that looks cool. I like that. I really, really like that. I appreciate the fact they did that. That being said, it is a, it's, I mean, it's not, you can't really see the lights with bright light in the room. It's kind of dim in here right now, but that's really what you would need. I mean, if it's dark out, that's when you need it being lit up. You know, you don't really need it lit up if it's already bright. So the positive side of that is the fact that if you, you know, have it table side or by the bed, it won't be so nuclear that you can't stand it. This should be probably not too bright, but just bright enough that you can use it to, to adjust the radio. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's go ahead and hook up this external FM antenna. It's set to the EXT. It was set to EXT before, so I wonder internal versus external. I thought that was an aux slash antenna switch, but it's internal external for the antenna. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if that improves our reception at all. Still here on FM, so let me turn the volume up. I play lacrosse. Are you washed in the documents? Base. Yeah, that made a big difference on reception. That made a big, big difference. So that's cool. That's really, really cool. Now, just as an A and B, I'm going to flip this. Back to internal, unplug the external antenna.
It's it's not terrible. There's definitely stuff out there still, but I, I do think that that external antenna makes a, a positive difference. Let's go ahead and uh, switch over to shortwave. That's, I thought that was AM. No, this is FM only. So it's FM, let me zoom in here on the switch, on the uh, control switch here. So where I thought it said FM or AM says aux. So that's the aux input, FM, shortwave, and Bluetooth. So this is FM only. I can hear a collective sigh rippling through the internet right now as you realize this is not an AM radio. But can it pick up shortwave? I'm gonna connect, I don't know if this will make a big difference or not, but I'm gonna connect this and uh, give us our best chance possible in getting something shortwave. It's really hard these days to get anything on shortwave. So let's see how I look out. Let's see how I do. There's a lot of little things and there's no fine tune control. So it's just this, you know, big massive knob. So I feel like I'm flipping over a lot of very narrow bands and I may be missing, I may be missing out on some things that I might have been able to get if I had a fine tune control. Hear those little things like It looks like this is a tuning indicator, so if you get a solid signal, it lights up this LED. I haven't got anything clearly yet. It is daytime. And we end today's broadcast with King Cole's multi That's the best sounding one so far. Okay, and obviously that will improve uh, at night. And it's totally location dependent. So my tuning experience, my reception experience, I should say, is going to be very different from yours or can be very different than yours. Either it could be better or worse. It's hard to say. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to demonstrate the Bluetooth. It would act as a Bluetooth speaker and it would be a capable one at that. I'm sure it is ported. It was very loud and punchy and um, had good bass. It had good reception, especially with the external antenna. I like the fact that you can either power it while you listen to it or you can recharge the battery and have it be a portable unit. And uh, yeah, this is cool. This is, I love, you know, this is a great example of a modern device with retro styling uh, where the modern functionality doesn't impede upon the design aesthetic. So I think that's a really cool radio. What do you guys think? All right, my friends, as promised, thank you for watching the video, uh, but as promised, I'm going to tell you how you can win one of these little portable internet radios that we reviewed today. We have one ready to go, as you saw. It is a cool little device, very fun. It may be a good first internet radio for somebody just getting into it, and we're going to give it away. So how can you win? Well, first of all, this is open to US viewers only. The reason being is it's too expensive for us to ship internationally in most cases. So US viewers only, 18 and over. And what we're going to do is a live show. And in that live show, we are going to be doing some giveaways. And this little guy is going to be one of them. So how do you get onto the live show? Well, the best way is to be subscribed if you're not already. Definitely make sure your notifications are enabled. Click the bell so you get all of them. That way, when we do go live, which will be at a random time, a random date, uh, you will get that notification, hopefully, and be able to jump on. At that point, we'll probably do a trivia question or something, and one lucky winner is going to win this. And we may do other giveaways as well. Mostly, my friends, I just want to say a huge thank you to you for spending time with us. 
each and every episode. It's a blast, a blessing, a privilege, and very fun to spend time with you presenting these items. And I hope you got some enjoyment out of them as well. Now, if you don't win it in the show, you can purchase it via link below. That goes for both radios. So check out the links in the description below. Don't forget about our merchandise. We've got shirts. We've got all kinds of swag. Also, we've got our custom 45 adapters and Seberg adapters. Lots of fun stuff. I am very, very excited today because we did something that we're going to be able to share with you in the next few days, I hope, maybe a week or two at the most. And it's going to be incredible. I can't wait to do that. But we've got a lot of other content coming even before that. So stay tuned for more. There's a lot coming. Lots is going on here at Recordology. But my friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time. <music>